Hello everyone. Welcome to the second video of the jurisprudence concept under the law. Now, in the first video, we discussed the concept and rather the definition of the word rights given by or rather discussed by different jurists. So, in this video, we shall be talking about the different kinds which are there of the rights. So, let's get started. Now, as you can see on the screen, there are different kinds and rather a lot of kinds of the, the concept of the rights. The first kind, as you can see, is perfect and imperfect right. The second is positive and negative. The third one is rights in rem and rights in personam. The fourth one is proprietary and personal right. Then rights in re propria and rights in re aliena. Then principal and accessory rights, primary and sanctionary rights, legal and equitable rights, vested and contingent and public and private rights. Let's get started by the discussion of the perfect and imperfect rights. So friends, when we are talking about the concept of the rights, we do have a lot of kinds, but these kinds does not implicate any concept of the rights in a very constrained manner. That means when you want to define rights, it still become very difficult. When we are talking about the perfect and the imperfect rights, the perfect right corresponds with the perfect duty. The perfect rights are recognized and also enforceable by the law and the actions can be taken against the wrongdoer by filing a suit in the court of law when it is breached. So while implication of the rights, it also has to be there along with the perfect duty. So that means my friend that the perfect rights only exist when there exists a perfect duty which is protected and can be executed by the law. And in the same way, when we are talking about the imperfect rights, it will be corresponding with the imperfect duty. Let's have a look at an example which will give an insight about the perfect and imperfect rights. For an example, A has given loan to B. So that means that B is having a perfect duty to repay the loan at the same time, A will be having a perfect right to recover the loan which he has given to B. Alright. At the same time, if B fails, then A can file the suit in the court of law. So that means that A can execute the perfect right that has been entrusted upon him. Now if you can see that this perfect right cannot be said completed without B's perfect duty. Now moving on to the next kind of the rights which is positive and negative rights. Now my friends, this concept is very important and rather very interesting when it comes to the discussion. The positive and the negative rights. So again, if we are looking into the aspect, the positive rights will be having corresponding effects with the positive duty. The same way negative rights will be having the corresponding relations with the negative duty. So what do we mean by this positiveness, positiveness of the rights and negativeness of the rights or the duties? So my friends, the positiveness can be stated in this way that if one person is having one kind of right which gives birth to another person's duty but it is obliging that person to do that act in a positive way. Whereas if one person's rights obliges other person's for not doing something or for not doing certain act, that would imply the negative right. So that means that the negative right along with the corresponding negative duty will ask or will require the omission or restrictions of the act. Rather, it is not so when it comes to the positive rights. Now moving on to the third right is rights in REM and rights in personam. So what do we mean by rem and by personum? Of course, these are the words which are not of English. So it becomes very uh, difficult to understand. Rights in rem. Now rem means world and personum means an individual. So rights in rem means the rights that one individual will be having against the world and rights in personum will be one individual's rights against another individual or in a, uh, another person. So REM, as I stated, means world and persona means persons. The rights in REM is the right available against the whole world while the other is available against a particular person. 
Now, rights in persona generally arises out of any contractual obligations, whereas the rights in rem arises only by one person's existence. That means if I am in existence, I'll be having certain rights uh, against the whole world, which I have to, which I will have power or my rights will be immune. Whereas rights in personam, for an example, if I am getting into a contract or I am drafting a contract with A for doing certain acts, for doing some business, then if the breach of that contract takes place, then my rights will be there against that individual only. I cannot ask the whole world to fulfill the duty which that person A has to fulfill. That means that rights in REM and rights in personam becomes very important to understand because it is one of the very important kinds of the rights. The next kind is proprietary and personal rights. Now, personal right is in respect of the person of owner and proprietary means uh, of any property. So that means proprietary rights are those which constitute a man's property or rather wealth. So these rights which possesses some economic or monetary value will be considered as a proprietary right and which are not of that value will be considered as the personal right. Now these personal rights will include the uh, right to reputation or other right to safety etc etc and the right uh, of the property that is proprietary rights that would include the right to possess the property or right, uh, uh, right to possess certain uh, those kind of properties which has the monetary value. So it is very easier to understand. All right. So let's move on to the next kind of the rights, which is rights in re uh, rights in re propria and rights in re aliena. Now, my friends, uh, propria of course that means the property. Aliena that means somebody else's. So rights in re propria means of my own property's rights, and right in re aliena means some other person's property's rights. So rights in re propria is a right in respect of one's own property. Rights in re propria, now it contemplates the complete ownership over that particular property. Thus it is the outcome of the jurisprudential aspect of the ownership. All right. Whereas the right of re aliena or the rights in re aliena is the rights in respect of the property of any other individual. Rights in real ena is the outcome of the jurisprudential aspect of the dominant heritage or rather servient heritage. For example, easements. Okay, so this is also one of the kinds of the rights. Now friends, you must be thinking that why these different kinds of the rights has been given. I mean, they are all like implying that somebody's right is there, somebody can own, somebody should not do this, somebody should not do that. But if you can see uh, that the rights in ordinary sense means the standard of giving permission of the actions within certain spheres. All right. So it means the standard which is permitted and which is backed up by the law also. So an action which is permitted by the law is called the rights. So it becomes very important for all of us to understand that when, in what case, where do we have the rights and where our rights are restricted. So in short, the legal rights are legally protected interests. So uh, this means that that is basically the reason that there are so many kinds of the rights. All right. So now moving on to the next kind, that is the principal and accessory rights. It is very evident from its name only that the person holding the property in its own name will be the principal. The person who is not so will be called the accessory. Accessor. That means to give excess. So it will be a transferable or rather a transferred right. So that means that the principal rights would be the main kind of the rights or rather you can say that it is the main or basic rights. Rather at the same time, the term accessory right would mean the, what do you call it? the consequential rights. That means if it is arising out of any consequence or any events as a result, then that would be called as an accessory right. But the rights which I have, basically, mainly, that would be the principal rights. Now, what are these principal rights? Do you have any example in your mind, friends? Think about it. The principal rights, right to life, right to live, right to speak, 
right to have that freedom right of the expressions freedom of expressions all these rights that you have my friends they are called the principal rights and the rights arising out of those rights by exercising those rights though they will be called as an accessory rights they will be the consequential eventual rights the next right of the kinds of the right is primary and sanctionary rights so again now this is this concept is very similar to the principal and accessory rights my friends primary means very basic and sanctionary means which arises out of something so primary is the basic rights and sanctionary rights are the consequential rights now they are right in persona for an example from the violation of another persons so they arise when somebody's rights are being violated whereas the primary rights are there like ipso facto that means rights in rem right to have the reputation etc etc they can be considered as the primary rights whereas violation if violation happens and other protection should be there for an individual then that protective right which is arising out of that violation will be known as the sanctionary rights all right so the next kind is legal and equitable rights now comes legal and equitable rights so legal rights are the rights which are given by the common law courts or rather common law which is based on the statutes and the uh, customs and usage etc equitable rights my friends they are the rights which arises or rather which is given by the court of the chancellor now or rather the equity courts which are based on the principles of the natural justice or conscience etc etc so that means equitable rights are somewhat near to the morality of any individual and legal rights are there which has been which has been recognized by the court of law now the next kind of the rights is vested and contingent rights now friends if you want to understand the meaning of this term vested and contingent you should accept uh, like the meaning of it in a very layman's language contingency so that means any contingency arising and the rights which has been given to that individual out of that contingency will be known as the contingent rights all right now what are the vested rights vested rights are a kind of right which is there already vested in one person so that means my friends that vested rights means which is already there along with that person even if certain consequence or certain events they do take place or they do not take place that is not going to affect that particular right that vested right with an individual but when it comes to the contingent rights the happening or non happening of the events is going to make an impact on those rights so friends these are the vested and the contingent rights now the last kind of the rights are the public and the private rights very easy to understand of course with its own, with its own wordings the public rights are those rights which are vested in by the state for an example when you are driving you are using the public property for that driving that is the road so when you have the right to use that road to reach to some place that right would be known as the public right but at the same time when a, what, what do you mean by a private right so a private right is the one which is exercised by an individual to protect his benefits now driving on a road is not going to benefit any individual so far because it is a public property so when that right is given by the state at large to every individual that will be known as the public right but my friends when certain rights are given to only certain individuals or rather a private which is like it is exercised by an individual to protect his own benefit then those rights will be known as the private rights now my friends if you understood the kinds of the rights and the meaning of the rights that would mean that we must now move on to the next topic of the discussion which is duty so in the next video we shall be discussing the concept of the duty in depth till then keep reading take care